this is Barack Obama. And I have a message for all Americans today who are working on their monitors. And, okay, enough of that. So this is a, a Gateway FPD 1930. It's a 19-inch monitor. And I was having trouble with my monitor setup. I'm going to let you zoom in here a little bit because what I ended up doing was connecting this with a VGA cord. Because the, this monitor, it uses a DVI connection. But, I mean, I'm telling you, I see nothing wrong with these colors. I got my Clash of Clans base pulled up for you there. <laughs> so you can see, the, you know, the vibrant colors, sharpness, everything. Nothing wrong with that. But now previously, I was having problems with this. I don't know if you can see over there, I'm using a Dell Precision T3400. It's a workstation computer. Workstation computer versus like a regular computer, I guess, is, you know, you know, if you're in a business environment, you have several employees, they all connect with their computers to a main computer with a main database on it. So not a lot of bells and whistles, but it's a 64-bit Windows Vista Pro is on here. And I, for the life of me, can't figure out what is wrong with this thing. Here's what was in it. Is this video card here. As you can see the back, we only got two uh, DVI connections back there. And the S video there, but uh, there's not a VGA connection. So, for unknown reasons, the monitor stopped working. Or something stopped working. Is it the monitor? Is it the connections in the back of the monitor? Is it the cord? Uh, is it the card? Is it the motherboard? Is it a software problem? I don't know. Never did know. But uh, since it stopped working, I ended up buying one of these. Your uh, GeForce 8400GS. VGA. 1024 DDR3. I mean, this is 30 bucks, so it wasn't like breaking the bank or nothing. Hooked it back up and got the same problem. I mean, it worked for a while and then it stopped. So, uh, I got another one. <laughs> I mean, once you install it, and you've been using it, I don't think they're going to take it back anyway. But why would I waste money on another? Because it felt like, you know, these are all probably good cars, and that are just something else uh, that wasn't working about it. So, this monitor sat in my living room for months, because I finally just gave up. So, uh, one solution I said, hey, what about uh, getting an adapter? I can get uh, like a DVI to VGA adapter, just a little plug that will fit on the end of this. That was the original cord on the back of my monitor. Now if you'll notice something, see the shape of the plugs there? Okay, there's a few different kinds. Uh, so mine, as you saw earlier, was this one. It's got the little side slot there and then the two sections. It's a DVI digital single link. In other words, you got to have one that has digital and analog. It supports both. Otherwise, a... Thank you, Amber. <laughs> Otherwise, a, an adapter would not work. If you used a DVI to VGA adapter, it wouldn't work. Not with mine. Because I'm blessed and lucky. So, um, that was out of the question. Uh, I keep reading that it won't work. I don't know what would actually happen if it did not work. You just wouldn't get a picture. Would it be blurry? I don't know. I didn't try. So I started looking at the back of my monitor and at the connection back there, and I noticed, lo and behold, it also has a VGA connection. So I was like, woohoo, I can put the 15-inch CRT back and put the monitor back. It worked for a while, until it went into sleep mode. And then I kept troubleshooting this problem, and uh, the computer will come out of sleep mode, but the monitor would not. What I found was uh, a lot of places on the internet say uh, it has to do with something called PLL over voltage. This is a setting in your BIOS and it's set to either on, off, or auto. And they said turn that off because it will mess with your S3 sleep settings. Now, what's S3? What is all this? I know it sounds complicated. Let's go into the BIOS. Now, to go into your BIOS, at least mine, hello, Amber, you press the uh, F2 button as it's starting up. You'll see up here in the corner, F2, setup. I hit F2, it says entering setup. Setup is BIOS. And it's going to come up with your blue BIOS screen here. Now be careful about playing with things in here because if you save some settings that you meant, didn't mean to save, I mean, you can mess things up. I did not see a PLL 
overdrive section. What I did see here is uh, I went to power management and there we go. Let me zoom in on this. I found what they were talking about when they said S mess up your S3 sleep modes. And it'll tell you uh, S1 system resumes more quickly from sleep mode. S3 system conserves more power when not in use. So I just changed mine. Mine was set to S3. I just changed it over to S1. And saved it. Now did that fix the problem? I ain't sure. And here's why. I go in here to uh, control panel. Again this is Windows Vista Pro I think. I haven't probably looked at it. Anyway. <laughs> and I go here to power options and choose when to turn off the display. This is Windows Vista remember so yours might be a little bit different. I did have it set for like 10 minutes or something so now I've got turn off the display never uh, put the computer to sleep never. Now one of these fixed the problem and I thought about yes I could come in and save some electricity and tell it to go to sleep in, in a little bit. But I just want to use the darn thing you know I don't want to sit here and troubleshoot all day it'll probably screw it up again and I'll have to switch monitors back around again so I got it working. One of these things fixed the problem. Either the S1 mode or this or both. And the other thing I did was go into my screensaver and I set mine to come on after five minutes. It's just a blank screensaver. So, you know, just to try to preserve the monitor as much as possible. So now I can use this monitor again. It's a VGA connection, but as you saw, it was a good picture anyway. And that's how I fix my monitor issues. And in case y'all are interested, here's my Pond Santa. Look at this thing. I've had it since December of 2014. I watered it and kept it alive, but it always had just green leaves. So how do you get them leaves to start coming back red? Well, apparently you stick it in a dark place from 12 to 14 hours every night. I put mine in the shower, shut the, the shower curtain, shut the door and keep it in there until the morning. Then give it plenty of sunlight. You might put yours in a closet or somewhere, but as you can see, the little leaves are starting to come back. They start out a little whitish, yellowish looking and I can see some red coloring in there. This is going to turn out pretty. And that's how you get a Santa to get its red leaves to come back. <laughs> Meep! discovered Libby's chicken Vienna sausage. That's right, chicken. Not chicken, pork, and beef, just chicken. Oh man, they taste much better than the other ones. I'll tell you what, when I eat one of these, mm, I ain't bored now, baby. I ain't bored now. <laughs> Somebody had to clean up after this crappy video.